Tim Talk, and today I'm doing my very first game introduction. And my friend Pierce is going to be playing the game with me. The game is called Ascension, the Chronicle of the God Slayer. And I'm, and I'm going to start with reading some of the overview. So this is lit similar to the backstory of the mythical world where the game takes place. So Ascension, Chronicle of the God Slayer. For millennia, the world of Vigil has been isolated and protected, and protected from other realms. Now, the barrier between dimensions is failing, and Samil, the fallen god, has returned with his army of monsters from the beyond. You are one of the few warriors capable of facing this threat and defending your world, but you cannot do it alone. You must summon powerful heroes and constructs to aid you in your battles. The player who gains the most honor points will lead his army to defeat the Fallen One and earn the title of God Slayer. Each turn, you will play cards from your hand to gain runes, power, or other effects like drawing cards. You can spend runes to acquire new cards for your deck. Power is used to defeat monsters, which earns you honor and other rewards. The, the cards you have available and monsters you can fight are constantly changing, so you always have different decisions to make. Okay, so what they call runes are basically like money in the world of Vigil. Uh, what they call power is basically like uh, uh, basically a bit like magical things you can use to defeat what they call monsters. Uh, and honor is something that they that you use basically to win. It's basically victory. Points. This is honor. Yep, that is honor. Uh, and you can see some. And some cards give you uh, honor at the end. It has a little star in the corner. So this card, what they call the Grand Design, uh, gives you six uh, honor at the end. When you ever see a card that has a little star in it and has a number, you can always tell that's honor that you get at the end when you total it up. So uh, there are cards called Heroes, Constructs, and, mo and Monsters. So Heroes, um, you, you use... Basically, to, they sometimes give you money, sometimes they give you power, and sometimes they just give you pure honor. Uh, and they can help you defeat monsters and help you acquire even better cards. They can help you win the game eventually. So, so the goal of the game is to get the most honor, and you can acquire that using certain cards. So you always start out with eight what they call apprentices and two what they call militia. So, an, so one apprentice, so apprentice can give you one rune, and one militia gives you one power. So if you can amass enough uh, honor and, not honor, I mean uh, power or runes, you can buy or defeat something like the Tablet of Time's Dawn, which is what they call an Enlightened Construct, uh, which costs five runes. So if you acquire enough runes, you can acquire certain cards. And then, of course, there are cards such as Monsters. Called, take the Corrosive Widow, for example. They cost four to defeat, and you gain, in this particular monster, or as you gain, three honor. And it also says each opponent must put a construct he controls into his discard pile. So you may wonder, I now know what monsters are, but I don't know the difference between heroes and constructs. It seems just they just help me get acquire things. Well, the difference is a hero gets into your hand, and then at the end of your turn, unless you have a special card that says not to, it all goes into what they call your discard pile. That's a main effect of what they call a deck building game. But a construct has, when you drop, when you put everything out, and if you get a construct in your five cards that you have every turn when you draw it, that stays out for the rest of the game. Unless someone defeats a monster, plays some card that, that forces you to get rid of your construct. So that's, so constructs basically are eternal. They can just stay out forever, and that can be a key factor to deciding what to get. So, um... Another thing is when you defeat a monster or monster, or if you get a certain card that says that you can get rid of a 
a card that doesn't help you that much, well, you can put it in the void. That basically goes to any cards that are unwanted or just, just defeated. So, but once something goes into the void, it can never be taken back. So, in the, so there are also different cards that have four different, four different factions, what they call them. And you see the Arha Templar is an enlightened hero. So the difference between the four factions is that uh, each one ha almost has a certain theme to it. So I, so the enlightened ones sometimes are able to tell you, um, you might have a card that says, take a card from your, you can acquire a card, and then you put it on top of your deck. So it's sort of, uh, the enlightened ones sort of give you a little bit of future telling, basically. The, occasionally, depending on the card. You see, the all the faction doesn't always rely on that one theme. So um, there are also, uh, I don't have any out, but there are things called life-bound constructs, which tend to give you honor right then and there instead of having you get the, at the end of the game when you're counting up. So that might give you uh, two honor, three honor, one honor, something like that, one of these. The one clear gem is one honor, whereas one big red gem is five honor. So you can also tell that there are other separate cards, which are still heroes, but they're not in this, what they call the center row, which comes from the deck. Um, so there's always going to be six cards out in the center row, and but there are also two different cards called the Mystics and the Heavy Infantries. So the Mystics and the Heavy Infantries are basically just really upgrades of... Uh, apprentices and militia. So a mystic is you need three runes to buy it and it gives you two runes forever and ever. It's not a construct but it will always keep coming up. So when you have a deck when you draw your five cards and then you sweep those away once you played them and then the other person will go it, it keeps going and when you run out of your deck you take your discard pile and you just shuffle it. And then your mystics or your heavy infantries all get sorted back through, and then you play it again if you come up with, with that kind of card. But you'll always have that card again and again. It's never just going to have you play that card and then it's gone, unless you banish it. So mystics cost three runes, and it gives you two runes, and it gives you one honor at the end of the game. So this is a mystic. Um... This is what they call a heavy infantry. It costs two runes, and it gives you two uh, power to defeat monsters. And it gives you one at the end. So this is a heavy infantry. There's also a card called the Cultist. It's this. And it basically means that uh, it's, it's uh, basically an everlasting monster. You can't really destroy it forever. Um, it basically is there for forever. It can never go away, and it it is it costs two power to slay it, and it gives you one honor. And so that way, I believe it's there for if you ha if you've stocked up on a lot of heavy infantry and there's really no other effect to it during the game, you can just kill that monster over and over. If you if there's just not if you're in a path where there's just not that many monsters and um, there really isn't anything else to do with your hand, that's an opportunity to defeat that card. Uh, and get you some everlasting honor on the way, on the way there. So anyway, so there's always going to be six cards. And oh, I haven't finished on describing which uh, the other types of factions. So the life-bound cards give you uh, pure honor, basically. Um, a lot of the time, but sometimes they'll do, they'll do other things. Um, and then there's also what they call Mechana cards, which is another one of the factions, and they seem to give you a lot of honor at the end. They're, they tend to have very high numbers because, and they uh, there are a few Mechana constructs and heroes that are very expensive. Um, there's also a t it also tends to have higher amounts of runes that, that are required 
to require constructs because they stay out forever, so you'd think that they would require a lot more. So you, you very rarely see a two construct or three construct. Occasionally you'd find a four construct, but, the mo but most of them are fives or sixes. Um, and, uh, and as the game progresses, your deck is going to get considerably thicker because um, you're buying more cards. And some people tend to banish a lot, but that's really not my type of strategy. So, oh, and the void heroes and constructs uh, tend to give you a lot of power to defeat monsters with. Um, that's their common theme. So, um, we're just about ready to play. I've introduced all the other cards. Any other cards I have not explained will be in the deck, and I will explain them when they either come up or if me or Pierce buys them or defeats them. So, Pierce, we're just about ready to start. Okay. So, you, when you start, you always draw five cards. And right now, it's always going to be an apprentice or a militia. So, I'll, I'll just go first. Start it off. And then you can draw your deck. So I have four apprentices and one militia. Now my one militia doesn't help me because the cultist requires two uh, power to defeat it. But So I have four to spend. Four to spend. And I'm going to buy something in the center row, a card called the Arha Templar. It costs four, it is an enlightened hero, and it can defeat a monster with cost of four power or less. And when you d defeat it or acquire a card in the center row, you put down a new one immediately. Yep. You're right, Pierce. And this card can also give you three honor at the end of the game. So now I'm going to sweep them all away, and now it is Pierce's turn. I have a militia, an apprentice, another apprentice, and another apprentice. So, I have four to buy and one to kill with. This is not going to do me any good with my one to kill with, but I will buy two Heavy Infantries. Heavy Infantries give you two power to kill with, just as he explained earlier. Yep. So, uh, now I have the exact same hand. So, I'm going to, to buy... I'm going to buy a Seer of the Forked Path and a Heavy Infantry. As you have the infantry. And what they call the Seer of the Forked Path costs two. And it says when it comes up, you never get the effect of a card when you just buy it. It always, it, it, you never get it then. You always get it when it comes up in your hand. Um, so it says draw a card. It's an enlightened hero. Um, it says draw a card. Then you may banish a card in the center row. See, when you banish a card in the center row, you don't get its power or its effect. It just goes away forever. Now you can go while I shuffle my deck. I have an apprentice, an apprentice, and one militia. I have four to buy, four runes. This is what they call runes on the card. So I have four, what you could call money, to buy cards with, and one to kill with, which is not going to do me any good. I am buying Druids of the Stone Circle, which is a life-bound hero. It gives you, at the very end of the game, you, it gives you three honor when you're counting up your thing, mm -hmm. your honor. And what's the effect of the of the card? The card effect is acquire a hero that costs three or less, and you can place it on top of your deck. Next time I draw it, I will get that effect. Okay. And, one second. and a new oh, card comes out. Shuffling. Ooh, Flytrap Witch. Very good card. Okay. So... Now I get one apprentice, another apprentice, a heavy infantry. So now I have enough to ding to what they call ding the cultist. And now I've got four to spend as before, but now I've got two to what, the, what we call to kill with. Um, so I'm going to ding the cultist, getting me one honor because the reward for that monster is one honor. And now I have four to spend. Hmm. There's no mo there's no uh, heroes or constructs that I can buy, so I'm going to take one mystic, even though that's only worth three runes. 
I'm drawing my five cards now. I have got a heavy infantry and a militia in this turn, which means I have three killing power, and since I have three apprentices, I now have three buying power. Since I have three killing power, I can kill a monster in the center row. I'm going to kill a monster known as the Mephit. When you kill a monster, it goes into the void, and you gain its reward. The Mephit says, reward, you gain two honor. You may banish a card in the center row. And banish means that you can throw it in the void and it'll be gone forever. Exactly. And I'm choosing to banish this card, which is another monster. I don't get its effects. It's called Samuel's Trickster. But it won't get but I won't get its effects, but I take it out so Tim can't defeat it later. Exactly. Too bad. And I still have three to buy. Which enables me to buy something in the center row. I'm buying the Mechana Initiate. And I'm, it gives you one honor at the end. It's our first Mechana Faction card, I think, we've, uh, we've had out. And I'm also buying a Heavy Infantry. Your turn, Tim. Mm -hmm. So, I have three to buy. And I'm going to buy a Mystic. Which gives me cost three. And it gets me two during the game. And then one honor at the end. And I, ha and I have my Arha Templar card that came up, and that says I can defeat a monster for <coughs> a cost of four power or less. So I'm going to create the Mistake of Creation, um, and it says I gain four honor, and I can banish a card in the center row or a card in, in my discard pile. And I'm going to gain my four, but because I already had one, I can just trade that in and get what they call a big red gem, which is worth five honor. So, Pierce, it's now your turn. Okay. I'm pulling out my five cards. I've drawn my first monster from the, uh, my first hero from the center row. Druids Good. of the Stone Circle. A it's a lifebound hero that gives you three honor at the end. Acquire a hero that costs three or less and put it on top of your deck. And I have three to kill with, once again. And two to buy. Using my three to kill with, I'm going to kill another Mephit, which gives me two honor, and you may banish a card in the center row. First, out comes this. And I'm going to banish a card so he can't get, so he can't get it. I'm going to banish the Corrosive Widow, which is a monster. Okay. And out comes the Aura Initiate. And now I have two to buy with, and I have one. Druids of the Stone Circle, I'm going to activate his ability, acquire a hero with the cost four or less, and three or less, and place it on the top of your deck. I'm going to buy a Mystic without paying its cost and place it on top of my deck. And I'm using my two to buy that I have normally to buy an Aura Initiate, who costs one and is a lifebound hero who gives me one at the end. Oh, the Aura Initiate is a lifebound. Interesting. Um, um, and I have, okay, so the lifebound Initiate just came up. Can I finish shuffling? I think it's about, oh. No. So now, get one. And because of my Seer of the Forked Path, I get to draw a card. And I can also banish a card in the center row, but I'm just choosing not to. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six to buy with. So I'm going to buy the Grand Design, which is a Mechana Construct. And it says, once per turn, gain two runes, and you may only spend it to acquire Mechanic Constructs. And you may, you may think that this card is very restrictive. It only gives me two, and I can only spend it to acquire a few, only a couple set of cards. So, the main reason why it's so expensive is because it gives you six honor at the end. Most monsters don't even give you six. So, that's why the... The effect of this card isn't extreme, isn't really worth the cost that's charging. So, and it is a Mechana construct. And now, I, I can't use anything with my one militia, so it is your turn, Pierce. Okay. 
I'm going to draw my five cards. I'm drawing a Mystic, an Apprentice, another Apprentice, and, an, and another Apprentice. But you see, I only have four cards. Since I don't have enough to finish my hand, I simply shuffle my deck and draw one more. And I drew another Apprentice. So that gives me a total of six to buy with. Yes. I'm going to buy the Flytrap Witch, which gives me two at the end. I mean, yes, two at the end. And I can use it to gain two honor next time I draw it. I'm also buying the Lifebound Initiate. Both of these are Lifebound Heroes. This one gives me one at the end. And now, Tim, it's your turn. Okay. So, I have three to buy with. I mean, three to, um, three power. So, because of my one militia and my one heavy infantry. My militia gives me one power, and my heavy infantry gives me two power. So, I have three to defeat with. And now, I am defeating Samil's trickster, which costs three to defeat. And I gain one honor, and also one rune to buy with. So I'm defeating that, and now I have one, two, three, four to buy with. So because I have four, I am buying what they call the Twofold Ascara, which is an enlightened hero, and it says copy the effect of a hero played this turn. So say I had a heavy infantry. I could, if I had this card in my hand, copy that effect. So instead of the heavy infantry giving me two, I would basically have an imaginary second heavy infantry. So it would give me four instead of only two. And it gives me two honor at the end. And it is your turn, Pierce. Okay. Now, I drew in my hand the McKenna Initiate, which allows me to gain one rune or one power. Since there's a, lo a lot of monsters out and not too many things to buy, I'm make taking one power. Combined with my heavy infantry, who gives me two power, this is three power, and I still have three to buy with. Using my three power, I'm going to kill a monster known as the Mephit, which gains me two honor, and I can banish a card in the center row. I'm going to take out Oziah the Peerless, and I'm banishing Zeron Duke of Lies, Good. who is another monster. Very high monster. Oh, and one thing I would like to point out is that this card, the Avatar of the Fallen, notes that this monster can't be defeated unless defeated. This, mo oh, this monster can't be banished unless defeated. So, say if Pierce wanted to eliminate an entire monster, he just couldn't defeat it unless he actually had the, the seven honor, not honor, I mean power that it takes to defeat that monster. Just one more thing I'd like to point out. And now, using my three to buy, I'm going to buy a Mystic, which enables me to get two runes next time I draw it. Mm -hmm. Wait one minute, just so I can finish shuffling. Okay, so I've got four, and now I'm up to five. And my Seer of the Forked Path allows me to draw a card. So, there you go. And that gets me an apprentice. So, no, so I now have one, two, three, four to spend. So because I have four, I believe that I'm going to buy the McKenna Initiate and a Mystic. And then comes up the Shadow Star. The first construct we've had in a little while. Okay. Oh, and I almost forgot. I have the Arha Templar, which is a, which allows me to defeat a monster with cost four or less. Unfortunately, there's no monsters with cost four or less in the center row, but it, the cultist still counts. So I'm defeating that, and I get one honor. And now it is Pierce's turn. I'm drawing my five cards. This turn, I've drawn a lot of cards that give me power to kill with. And then I have the Aura Initiate, who is an, an enlightened hero, who says draw a card. So I draw another card. 
This gives me <coughs> one, two, four, six to kill with, and only one to buy. I'm using my six to kill with to kill a monster known as the Wind Tyrant, which allows me to gain three honor and three runes. So, I gain three of those little clear gems, and I gain three more to spend. So now I have four to spend. And I'm using my leftover to kill. Oh wait, I can't do that. But this gives me four to spend. Since I have four to spend, I'm buying the Shadow Star, which is a void construct. And it is your turn, Tim. Oh, and Pierce, you can get one of the large red gems. Oh, yes. See, you trade in one, two, three, four, five clear ones to take one red. Okay. So, now I have my five cards laid out. And I have one, two, yep, just two, two by ways. So, I'm probably only going to get... Really, the only thing I can get is a heavy infantry, the power card. And, but I also have two militia, so I can defeat the cultist. And I have my, oh, don't, I messed up. Technic, technically, I'm just good. Pierce, you mind if I just retake that turn? Of course not. Because I just forgot something. I have the twofold Ascara in my hand, and that can copy the effect of a hero played this turn. But it doesn't count if it's already been played and used up. So, what I'm going to do is um, take back this heavy, in this heavy infantry, and, in well, I actually, I ain't going to buy the heavy infantry, but I'm going to copy the militia, so then... Actually, no, because that really doesn't help me. I'm going to copy the Apprentice, so, so I'm going to take back the heavy infantry, and I'm going to get the Shade of the Black Watch, which is a Void Hero, gets me two power when it comes up, and I can banish a card in the hand or discard pile. I'm drawing, and since I already shuffled my discard pile, it just becomes my deck. So now I draw my other cards. I have my Druids of the Stone Circle oh, that, that lets me acquire a hero with the cost of three or less and place it on top of my deck. I also have the Heavy Infantry, which allows me to kill something with two power. And I have three Apprentices, which gives me three to buy with. I'm using my three Apprentices to buy the Runic Lycanthrope, who is a life-bound hero who gives you one at the end. And then, I'm using my special card that allows me to gain a hero with the cost three or less and put it on top of my deck to grab a mystic, put it on top of my deck. Oh. And now I am dinging the cultist once, and since I have enough, I'm trading in these to get a red gem. Okay. And uh, <coughs> last last turn, as Pierce is beginning to start, I forgot to ding the cultist, which took one honor uh, as we started to take his turn. So... Now I have, let's see, two, four, five to spend. So I'm going to buy the Arha Initiate, which is, which is a cost of one, and it is an enlightened hero, and it says I can draw a card when it comes up, and it gives me one at the end. But I'm also going to buy the Reactor Monk, because I have enough to. Um, Reactor Monk. It's a Mechanic Hero, it has cost of four, and it says gain two, it comes up, and the next construct you acquire this turn costs one less. And also, my grand design came up, and uh, there technically is a Watchmaker's Altar out there, but I really, I'm not planning to buy that. And that says once per turn I can gain two, but I can only spend it to acquire Mechanic Constructs. So... And I also have a heavy infantry, so I can gain the cultist. And Pierce, it is now your turn. And then, oh, and because this is a construct, it stays out for the rest of the game. I've drawn the flytrap, which is which is a lifebound hero that gains you two honor when you draw it, and you also get to draw an extra card. So now this allows me to have four to kill with and three to spend, since I have. 
a mystic, and an apprentice. So, now that I have four to kill with, I'm going to kill the cultist twice. And I'm going to use my three to spend to buy the temple librarian, which is an enlightened hero. And it says, discard a card. If you do, draw two cards. And at the end, it gives you one honor, and it costs two runes. And now, it is your turn. Yep. Okay. So, finish drawing my cards. And now I have, let's see, one, two, three, four cards. Four to spend. But my Seer of the Forked Path gives me the ability to draw one card. And I am. So, and now I have six to spend because I have an apprentice, a mystic, another apprentice, and another mystic. So now I have six in total. And I'm going to buy Oziah the Peerless, which is cost of six, and it's an enlightened hero, and it allows me to defeat a monster with cost six or less. Very powerful card. Very and it good you, card. Yes, and it gives you six, I mean, I meant three at the end. And Pierce, it is now your turn. Okay. Now, I've also, I've drawn the Aura Initiate, which allows me to draw one more card. And since I have the Lifebound Initiate, I get one Honor right now, and I get one Rune. So, since I have the Mystic too, this gives me three Runes, plus my Apprentice, which gives me four Runes. And I also drew the Shadow Star, which is a Void Construct, once per turn, gain one to kill with. And I have the Heavy Infantry, so that's three to kill with. So, now with my four to buy with and my three to kill with, I'm going to do something. I'm going to use my four to buy with to buy the Shade of the Black Watch, which is a void hero that says gain two power to kill with. You may banish a card in your hand or discard pile, and it gives you one at the very end. And now, I'm going to use my four to buy with to buy two heavy infantries. And now, it's your turn. Okay, so, I have my five cards. And I have one, two, three, and just three to buy with. But I have the twofold Ascara, which allows me to copy the effect of a hero. So I'm going to copy my Mystic. And that allows me to have one, two, three, four, five to buy with. Hmm, what should I buy? Five to buy. I'm going to get the Void Thirster, which is cost of five. It is a Void Construct, which means it'll stay out every turn. And it says once per turn, gain one honor. No, I mean, and then power. And the first time you defeat a monster in the center row each turn, gain one honor. It's a pretty good card. Oh, and I also have the Archive Templar, which, which allows me to defeat a monster that has four to um, four power, which requires four power or less. And then I'm going to defeat the cultist because there really isn't any better monsters. And now um, it is, and I have two from this so I can ding the cultist again. So I was going to get this monster. It's going to get a red gem. And now I, because I ding the cultist, I get one on her back. Okay, and Pierce, it's now your turn. Okay. I'm taking out an apprentice, another apprentice, another apprentice, a Mechana Initiate, and a Mystic. This gives me three, four, five, and since I'm using the Mechana Initiate, I'm going to make it so that it gives me one rune instead of one power. So that's six to buy with. And one to kill with because of my Shadow Star, which is a Void Construct. I'm going to use my six to buy with to buy the Land Talker, which is a lifebound hero. It says gain three honor when you draw, I mean, three runes. And at the end, you get three honor. And now, I'm going to trade in my five clear gems 
to get a red gem. And it is your turn, Tim. Okay. So, I have my reactor monk, which allows me to get two, three, four. To buy. Two runes. Um, so, I think I'm going to buy the Artiber of the Precipice, which is cost of four, uh, a void hero, and it says the next time I draw it, it has draw two cards, then banish any card in your hand. Banish refers to taking whatever card it is into the void, where it can never be used again for the rest of the game. 